Well, it looks like the rising wedge started to uh, fall <laughs> and break down to the downside, and the MACD on the SPY actually crossed a bit below. So, overall, not very bullish. Anyway, <laughs> we're going to go over all of the major indices, crypto, the dollar, and all of the other stocks that you guys want me to check out. And without further ado, let's get right into it. All right, well, this is a chart of the SPY. And yesterday, I said that the lower level of this rising wedge right here was 424.60 okay if we broke down below that that's when you would go short intraday right now it's very difficult to tell you guys where to swing which direction like overall for the next few days to go in but intraday levels are much easier to trade personally at the moment right so i said that 424.60 was the lower level of the rising wedge that clearly ended up breaking today all the way down to 423.54 so if you had gone short at that level you would have made a lot of money <clears throat> and you would have uh overall been in the proper direction of the market so that would have helped and now it's just a matter of let me go to the spx now it's just a matter of monitoring uh basically where we're going to go from here right and what happens with the technical indicators i was saying that the technical indicators were extremely strong but price action is the main thing that we have to look uh, for, right? Regardless of how I feel or what I think in the market, if we see price invalidating a potential bullish move, which we can see here with a rising wedge breakdown, if we continue going down lower, right? Very clearly, this is not bullish, <laughs> right? So for now... Um, it looks like we've broken down below the uh, rising wedge. Um, the level that we would need to look at for tomorrow as resistance, if we were to re-enter this, uh, this uh, lower, you know, the lower level of the rising wedge, on the spy would be approximately, would be approximately four twenty-five eighty. All right, that's the lower level. If we cross back above that, then we are very bullish. All right, so we have to reclaim that level. For us to continue on upward, um, let's go ahead and look at the B bands. The B bands still look pretty good. Like I said, the MACD is very, very tight. And if this breaks, it can break very, very fast. But again, um, you know, overall, I don't think that they're going to allow the market to fall too heavily. But one thing that we need to take into consideration for tomorrow, I almost forgot. Tomorrow, two very, very important things are going to happen tomorrow. So at 10 30, uh, crude oil inventories are going to come out. We're going to look at crude oil uh, soon. But then at 2 o'clock, super, super, super important. FOMC economic projections. So basically what we're going to find out tomorrow is whether or not the Fed is going to taper off of their buyback. So they allocate a certain amount of money per month to buying back assets, right? And their buying of assets has propelled the market much higher, Right. I think it's uh, dozens, like a large number at this point, right? Billions of dollars per month that they're funneling into the asset uh, prices of like equities and various different securities. So what we're going to find out tomorrow is, is the Fed going to stop or lower the amount of money that they're um, buying back with, right? So obviously, if, for example, they're using $120 billion monthly, if they say, hey, you know, we're going to cut it down from 120 to 100, that's 20 billion less dollars going into the equities market, which is going to hit um, the stock market, right? It's going to be very, very bad. Not very bad, but it's going to be bad for the tech sector, right? And in my opinion, if we do have that and they do say that, look, we're, we're cutting down the amount of buyback per month. That is going to be bullish for the IWM and the financial sector. So banks and the IWM are going to uh, go higher and the tech sector is going to fall. If they say, look, we're going to continue, you know, we're going to continue buying back stocks and doing whatever we have to do to keep the economy afloat, blah, blah, blah. That is going to just continue being bullish for the tech sector in general. But just keep in mind, just watch for the tapering news. At two o'clock, if they if they say, "Look, we're going to we're going to cut back the amount of buyback," 
sell your longs intraday because I definitely think that the market is going to um, fall short term if that news does come out. Okay. So that's that. <clears throat> this is forexfactory.com. It's a really good website. You guys should um, definitely check that out. Okay. So there's the spy. We're falling out of the rising wedge. Um, the MACD is very, very tight. And honestly, tomorrow's news is going to be very, very important. So just be very careful and cognizant that that is going to happen, right? <clears throat> Obviously, the QQQ was having a you know tremendous rally. It needs it needed somewhat of a um you know a rest day, especially since the rest of the market <clears throat> was also overextended. Uh, the support level that we're looking at here is three forty seventy five for the Qs. Um, and again, all eyes are going to be on tomorrow's meeting for the FOMC. Um, we can see that the MACD is extremely, extremely overbought. <laughs> so, uh, we might see a bit of a consolidation on the queues down here, right? And then that would create a bull flag, and then we would break down. Uh, we would break out above from there. But you know, uh, it's we just have to look at it from day to day, and that is really it. Which uh, a good sign though is the RSI fell pretty sharply. It fell from 66 to, what is that, 62.5. A pretty sharp move to the downside, considering we didn't really fall too heavily, which is a bullish sign. So basically, like, imagine it falls down over here, and then the RSI goes down even lower, right? That is a bullish sign, meaning that there's a lot more potential room to go, even though the Q's price did not fall in comparison to the amount the RSI fell, all right? So we have to look for divergences like that to determine whether or not a uh, stock is going to, uh, whether or not, you know, uh, the equity that we're looking at is going to continue going higher or lower, right? <clears throat> the IWM obviously <clears throat> is, uh, again, like it's going to be heavily dependent for tomorrow's news. Uh, the support level that we're looking at on the IWM is this Fibonacci level here. At 228.08, literally the same level. I haven't redone this chart in, you know, in a while. And it's the same levels we just keep bouncing around. The resistance is going to be 234.53, uh, which is the prior, you know, highs. And the support is that level, 228.08. It looks like we're doing the same consolidation that I was saying might happen on the queues, right? Like I said, that we would consolidate a bit potentially. And it looks like that's exactly what we're doing on the IWM, right? And the IWM, as we saw in yesterday's YouTube video, <laughs> the YouTube video, yesterday's video, um, the MACD is oversold, <clears throat> all right? And when the MACD is oversold and it's below the yellow MACD line, that means that there is a lot of room to potentially go higher, all right? So when this crosses above, that is very bullish. And when we're lower, and still maintaining a bullish structure, that is also extremely bullish. Okay. So overall, you know, the indices, the technical indicators, they all look pretty phenomenal. The only issue is that the spy fell out of the rising wedge. All right. So if this does not, you know, reclaim the level, or if this doesn't hold above, uh, you know, this support level here at 422.80 then obviously the Q's and the IWM are also going to take a hit the IWM is definitely going to fall down below 228 the Q's are definitely going to fall down below 340 and potentially lower so all three of them you have to look at all of them at the same time and monitor them you have to realize that the QQQ the, um, the MACD is much higher than the IWM, which means that the IWM has more potential room to go higher than the Qs. Okay. Which is why, you know, the Qs, the market in general was keying off of the tech sector. Yesterday they were keying off of the tech sector because the Qs had a huge green day and now it had a red day. So that's why we saw selling in the rest of the market. The Qs were the heaviest loser today at 0.65 down. Uh, the IWM and the SPY obviously fell down as well. So, yeah, we just have to look at all of those things at the same time. 
goodness but crude oil goodness gracious man this is fantastic <laughs> okay so the fact that crude oil is just crude oil also made a rising wedge but broke out above it so that is just that's fantastic so um let me go ahead and draw this out yeah there we go so that's insane <laughs> a rising wedge is a bearish pattern but crude oil created a rising wedge uh we were freaking look look at this we were rallying for so long very very bullish all throughout here and we broke above a rising wedge which is insane and uh that's ba look look it created a new high but the macd hasn't even crossed above the level yet this is what i mean by things are just looking irrationally strong right now in the uh with indicators right this looks so strong it didn't even cross above the yellow line yet but we've made new highs so that is extreme strength in crude oil and we now see the rsi is a bit overbought but we see in the past um you know crude oil has a history of trading in overbought territory for the rsi so this isn't a huge uh, warning signal just yet um we just have to be off of the uh price action so there's crude oil and now let's look at the dollar obviously the dollar is not doing too well uh it still continues to have trouble at this um <clears throat> level here at, along this trend line um which was support before but now it's acting as clear resistance so the dollar basically is not doing too well which means that the overall stock market is going to continue on higher if the dollar starts rallying then expect uh stocks in general to start falling okay so yeah that's basically it on the dollar we can go ahead and look at this irrelevantness real quick yeah so i mean i'm not even gonna waste time going through that <laughs> all right so now let's go ahead and just check out bitcoin and ethereum okay so this looks pretty messy that's fine but <laughs> What we were looking at yesterday was the 38.2% FIB level for Bitcoin, right? And I explained how usually when we do fall very, very heavily, whether it's on a minute chart or a daily chart, a weekly chart, etc., right? We always tend to bounce back to the 23.6% FIB level and the 38.2% FIB level. And yesterday I was saying that this level here is a very strong resistance level for Bitcoin. If we can cross above this level, also in confluence with the lower uh, trend line of that falling wedge pattern that, um, you know, Raul Paul uh, signaled as well. These two things in confluence right here, this is a massive resistance level. That's why we saw, I think on the minute chart, like about an hour ago. Here's a minute chart. Yeah, look at this. <clears throat> so this is like 414 and no sorry this is like 314 and it was like it was trading right along at this level but we fell all the way back down to uh, 39.5 so yeah that is that's the major um that's a major uh resistance zone for bitcoin currently and if bitcoin can't reclaim that then the rest of the crypto market is not going to um continue on higher so right now also with the uh upper level of the b bands uh, Bitcoin is starting to, you know, trade out of it. So that could also mean, you know, we need to consolidate a bit more to give more space for the upper level of the B band to widen a bit. So if we trade along here and the B band continues to widen a bit more, that would give more room for the price to go higher before it touches the upper level, right? So <clears throat> all of those things need to be taken into consideration and um also the macd is extremely overbought which is not a good sign for the you know for bitcoin and the overall crypto market so this is also you know you could also technically say that this is a bear flag and uh yeah bear flags are very bearish patterns but overall it needs to cross above 41.4 right and it needs to consolidate above and it needs to cross above and hold that level basically if it doesn't then 
the rest of the crypto market is not going to do well. Ethereum, right? Same concept, sort of, right? Whereas uh, Bitcoin is also trading along the 38.2% FIB. Ethereum is lagging a bit behind. Um, so we need to see... I mean, overall, look, like this is a very new market. Blockchain is going to be the future. It's very, very intuitive. And it's... It, blockchain is the future. Ethereum, what they're doing with the network and everything, especially with NFTs and marketplaces especially where the um technology is going it's definitely here to stay but we need to take into consideration this triangle here so the upper level of the triangle is also also in confluence with the 2736 level so we need to cross above 2736 on ethereum right if we can't cross above 2736 that is basically the equivalent of 41,400 for bitcoin okay <clears throat> and the level of support is going to be the 23.6% FIB level at 2350. So we need to take into consideration um, those two levels on uh, Ethereum. Okay. All right. So there's that. Now let's go into all the stocks that you guys want me to check out for technical analysis, starting with Apple. All right. Apple, yesterday we saw that it was trading outside of the B bands. We saw that tech had an amazing rally yesterday, which is why Apple was doing so well apple is heavily weighted in the spy and the qqq indexes um so today apple had a red day so obviously you know the Qs and spy also had a red day as well <clears throat> we see that it bounced off of the upper level of the b band and um basically the main level of support that needs to stay uh sustain is this trend line here and tomorrow that level of support is going to be approximately 128.37 all right so we need to stay above 128.37 if we cross below that tomorrow on apple then that would be a very good scalping short opportunity for puts we can also see that the macd is very very overextended so um yeah but the bullish case would be so this would be you know we see like a huge rally here if we can consolidate a bit stay above this level here and then shoot on forward, that would be very bullish for Apple and the overall sector, uh, tech sector in general. <clears throat> MVIS. Okay, so MVIS, we can see that it's in an uptrend, right? And we can see that it had a large move upward and consolidated a bit downward. So now we're approaching a zone where it's basically like two make or break zones, right? So for tomorrow, the make or break, sorry. So tomorrow, the level that needs to hold as support is going to be approximately 2042. All right. The next very, very important level for support tomorrow is going to be 1868. So 2042 and 1868 are very, very important levels on MVIS. If those levels sustain themselves, all right, and if we bounce off of this level, this would be very very bullish potentially for a move higher and then we can you know create a bull flag and uh go on higher but those are the two important levels of support for mvis tomorrow <clears throat> dslt right also in a in an uptrend <clears throat> um the very very so it's there's two main important levels of support all right obviously the resistance levels are going to be you know um the June 9th highs at $2.25. If we could cross above that, then we're going to retest uh, $2.36. But we had a red day and we need to look at the support levels for tomorrow. So tomorrow, the levels of support are going to be at $2.03. And then this very important level of support at $1.95. So $2.03 and $1.95 on CSLT. OCGN was a morning mover it had a huge move in the morning and after hours <clears throat> we see that it was oversold outside trading outside of the uh, lower level of the b band we see the macd is very very oversold the rsi is very close to being oversold <clears throat> we opened up higher but then we ended up falling much lower all right but the most important level that needs to hold for ocgn is going to be this level here at basically six dollars right so six dollars needs to hold 
um this would be a really good risk reward buy you're basically you know risking what like 30 or 40 cents in exchange to make three dollars three dollars and 30 cents so that would be a pretty good um risk reward trade if you i mean you could also put your stop loss a bit lower because there is going to be another level of support that people are going to look at for also gn at this uh gap fill so if six dollars breaks the next downward target is going to be five dollars and 67 cents which is the high of this candle here we can see that there is a literal gap right in between these two candles and they need to be filled okay so right here between 583 and 567 that is a gap that needs to be filled and most likely if we cannot hold these levels here that level is going to be filled so just be aware of that <clears throat> blackberry all right so blackberry obviously blackberry is going to go to the moon as well followed by you know um starting with amc and gamestop but blackberry so basically you can see that it's uh it's very bullish right so this is a bull flag it's maintaining support it's very oversold on the macd the rsi is a bit stagnant um we really need to hold above 13 dollars on blackberry right which is the 61.8 percent fib level if we can hold above there we can make new highs but it really all depends on gamestop and amc because that's what is carrying uh blackberry right all right matic <clears throat> Matic, Matic is very, it's a very, very good coin. Like it is, it's doing very, very, very well. It did very well uh, the day that the market fell, um, like a few weeks ago. It's continuing to do very well. You can see that it's trading, you know, above, um, it, you know, it created a um, uptrend and we bounced off of the uptrend very well. It's really trading very nicely so now the next level of support that we need to hold on matic is 152 all right so basically if 152 holds we can continue on higher and we can also see and see that it also crossed out of a downtrend right here and um yeah it crossed above it retested the lower line and it just continued on higher we can see that this looks like a very bullish structure the macd though is now a bit overbought right but the rsi still has a lot more room to go all in all it needs to hold 150 right if it holds 150 um things can go much higher but then the next level of support are going to be this downtrend line or this trend line that was formed here which is going to be approximately at 120 125 by the time it touches it okay so overall matic looks very very bullish <clears throat> Cardano, uh, yesterday I was showing how it needed to break above this um, downtrend line on Cardano. So today, <clears throat> it did cross out of it. But because Bitcoin had a, uh, a big move to the downside, Cardano failed to break out. So anyway, the, the level that it needs to break out of is basically where we're at right now, which is at 158. Um, if 158 crosses out, then... Like I said yesterday, we might see a day or two of a green move and then potentially either a retest of 158 or a complete retest of this trend line that it broke out of. Okay. Um, the MACD is starting to cross out just a little bit, cross above just a little bit, which is a very bullish sign. The RSI is stagnant. So it's just, it's gearing up for a strong move, but it really all simply just depends on Bitcoin currently um so yeah there's cardano ethereum classic <clears throat> so ethereum classic we can see that it's underperforming um it needs to hold it really really needs to hold uh this level of support for tomorrow which is at 55 dollars essentially if 55 dollars breaks then you know it can fall down much lower because the oh macd is overbought which is not good right it's a bearish sign if the macd was down here right and uh we were at support that would mean that you know we have room to go to the upside but the fact that we're overbought 
at support is not a good sign. So we have to keep $55 basically uh, in mind for Ethereum Classic. <clears throat> so yeah, good luck. TSF. <laughs> okay, so TSF. Uh, it really needs to hold the same level here at 50 cents. Uh, I don't remember the last time I even did technical analysis on this, but these levels are still holding. So it needs to hold 50 cents. We can see that, um, you know, it bounced off of it today. And the resistance level that we're going to have to look at is 70 cents. So this does create somewhat of a good, you know, risk reward trade. If you were to go long here, you could have, you could have a stop loss a bit lower with a target at 70 cents or higher. Uh, we can see that the MACD dipped down to the bottom side, uh, dipped down very, very sharply. So, I mean, it is sort of in confluence with the price action in general. So that isn't a huge tell, but the RSI is leading to the oversold side as well. But overall, we are extremely oversold on the MACD at support. 50 cents is very, very important on TSF. Okay. XRP, same as Cardano. It needs to cross out of this uh, trend line here. Okay. And the trend line price is essentially at the 23.6% FIB level at 90 cents. If we can cross above 90 cents, then um, yeah, we'll have like a day or two at least of a green move. And then once again, we'll retest either the breakout point or we'll come back and retest uh, this trend line itself. But the main good strong level of support is going to be um, good strong level of support is going to be the lower trend line here. And today that level would be at 83.5. And tomorrow, that level is going to be 84.5. Okay, so those are the levels to watch. Uh, we can see that the MACD crossed above, which is supposed to be a bullish sign. We were supposed to cross out, right? But the fact that we didn't yet cross above is, that's not a good sign. So you have to keep these uh, levels um, into consideration. Like this, this was not good. Um, yesterday we were supposed to cross out of this line. We were just crossing above on the MACD. Things looked good, but we failed. So yeah, so now the level of resistance is 90 cents. <clears throat> so we need to cross above 90 cents and hold. Mara clearly very overextended out of the, um, you know, the Bollinger Bands. Um, we did cross above 2960 which was, uh, I think what I said yesterday, we needed to hold above it. And we are holding above it, which is a good sign. The MACD is extremely overbought. Similarly, you know, obviously to Bitcoin. And um, yeah, I mean, look, it just needs to hold 29.55. And the resistance level for Mara is 32.42. Literally, like there's, you can't really trade Mara alone. You have to continuously watch Bitcoin. If Bitcoin moves up 3%, you can expect at least a 5 to 7% move in Mara in the same direction. All right. So, you know, those are just the things that you need to take into consideration. Um, it's all heavily dependent on Bitcoin. But yeah, those are the levels essentially on Mara. Uh, 2955 is support and we're holding above it. So that is a very good sign. We could also look at the uh, moving averages. It failed exactly at the 50 simple moving average which is again you know it's not the best of uh, bullish signs all right netflix netflix was also similar you know we had a uh, downtrend line that we were about to break out of um you know the macd was just crossing above but we failed at resistance we made a complete about face and um yeah this isn't a very bullish sign but it all depends on how we can recover from this so the MACD did switch bullish. We did cross above it, but the price action is bearish. Okay, so now we need to see whether or not Netflix can cross above 502 tomorrow. If we can cross above 502, which is the upper level of this, you know, this uh, lower this downtrend line, that would be very bullish. <clears throat> All right, the level of support that we would need to watch for tomorrow is 484. So 502 is resistance. 484 is support. So that's uh, those are the levels that we need. We would need to watch on Netflix. 
Obviously, Netflix had a red day today as well because the overall uh, tech sector also had a red day. So, yeah, we just need to be cognizant of um, those levels for Netflix. <clears throat> Boeing. Boeing is... Wow, I love Boeing. <laughs> so, um, yeah, we can see that it created a... It was, it was rallying heavily, right? And then it started to consolidate a bit, right? So now we're at a very important level here of support, right? I'm going to go into the support soon, but if basically if it bounces off of this, then we can go higher the same length as this. Okay, so this length here, we can end up going higher. So it's approximately at least 270. But it all depends on if Boeing can hold these levels here. So the levels that we would need to watch as support. First of all, it bounced. All right. So this level here, this, this line right here, skinny one, is in confluence with the 38.2% FIB level at 243.77. Okay, now I'm just going to turn that off. And, um, yeah, so, so basically this level needs to hold as support. Uh, the 38.2% FIB level at 243.77. We can also see that the MACD is extremely oversold. We're bouncing basically off of support oversold MACD, the RSI is pointed a bit upward. That is a very bullish sign. So yeah, we just need to hold above 243.77. If that can hold, then Boeing can make new highs and you know it can not new highs, but it can potentially hit 270 again. Purely based off of uh the flagpole and this bull flag that is potentially being formed currently. Alright. So yeah, that's something to keep an eye on Sorry, yeah, so I also see a falling wedge on Boeing, which is very, very, very bullish. So, um, basically, the lower level of the falling wedge is in confluence with this 38.2% FIB level. Um, you know, try to find a buy along this lower level. Um, but the upper level of resistance for tomorrow is going to be this level here at 246.61. So that level needs to break above. If we can break above that, then we're going to see a day or two of positive move. And then again, either a retest of 246.61 uh, or a complete retest of this, you know, trend line here at basically 243.77. So those are basically the levels to watch on Boeing. Overall, Boeing looks very, very bullish. So yeah, hopefully it crosses above and it's going to pay off really well. AHT, also a very, very nice mover <clears throat> recently. Uh, this trend line here. Is going to act as very strong support and tomorrow that level is going to be at approximately 540. If 540 doesn't hold then the next level of support is going to be approximately 489 on AHT. We can see that the MACD is extremely oversold. We can see that the RSI obviously is not overbought anymore because of this huge downward move but I don't think that this trend line can hold. Most likely we'll end up breaking it and potentially retesting 489. And from there, if we can create some sort of a support, then it would give us a lot of room to go to the upside. So those are the uh, levels of support to watch on AHT. Zynga. Ooh, yeah, I haven't done technical analysis on this either, and it's just the same levels. Basically, uh, the 38.2... Let me... Uh, the 38.2% FIB level acted as good support today at 1040. And uh, basically, 1040 needs to hold. If 1040 does not hold, then 1024, which is the 50% FIB level, needs to hold on Zynga, right? If those two levels hold, the level of resistance is going to be 1059. Uh, the MACD barely crossed above, um, but it had a huge red day. So that's not a good sign. Um, it really is not a good sign on Zynga. It means that it can potentially fall even lower. So I'd be careful about going long on Zynga. But, you know, I could be wrong. It all depends on whether or not the levels hold and sustain themselves. Okay. HEPA, similar. It's had a very strong uptrend. And the level that needs to hold as support tomorrow is going to be 215. If 215 doesn't hold, then I would be very wary of... um. <laughs> going long on HIPAA, okay? Because 
the next levels of support are much lower. So yeah, we can also see that the MACD is very overbought and pointed downward. But it is a good sign that HIPAA is still in a bullish structure. This is very bullish still. And this level of uh, support, if that holds, it would give more time for the MACD to cool off a bit more and go even lower. Um, and if HIPAA barely breaks and still holds above, you know, $2 essentially, if it still holds above $2 or $2.05 and the MACD cools down all the way, the RSI cools down a bit more, that can potentially be enough um, fuel for HIPAA to continue on higher. So yeah, those are the things that we need to watch. Or H E P A. <clears throat> Givo. Givo broke the uptrend. And um basically it you can see that this uptrend it was acting as support multiple times. Now it broke. And now the next level of support is going to be 761. So 761 is a very strong level of support. Multiple times it's acted as resistance and support in the past. We can see that the MACD is now very oversold and the RSI is pointed downward. So it is a good sign that we are oversold at support. Okay, so 761 needs to hold. And it looks like it could potentially hold because we are oversold on the MACD. And when we are oversold on the MACD, it means that there is potential room to go higher. It's also another good sign that the 20 exponential moving average acted as support today on Jibo. So that's another thing. Okay. So Anchor. Anchor similar to Cardano and Ripple. Um, you know, there's a downtrend line that needs to be broken. Whoa. What is this? Let me delete that. That, that, this. Okay. So you can see that the MACD just barely broke above today. But we failed at resistance, which is not a good sign. Um, yeah, we were, gear we were gearing up for a very strong move. But because Bitcoin uh, had a down move today, uh, the other cryptos that were supposed to have a breakout today did not. So, you know, this level of resistance is very, very important. Uh, tomorrow, the level is approximately 87 cents. So 87 cents needs to break by tomorrow. Today, um, the level is approximately 90 cents. So 90 cents today, then 87 cents tomorrow are going to be the resistance levels that need to break above. Okay. Um, and then obviously the support is, you know, the lows. <clears throat> so yeah, anchor overall, it looks much, you know, it doesn't look too good because the MACD crossed above, but you know, if we do cross above this trend line and then we cross above the 23.6% FIB level at 92.5 and hold above that, then that is a very bullish sign. So yeah, those are the levels that we need to watch on uh, anchor. SOS. Same old story. It needs to... Damn. <sighs> yeah, the MACD... <clears throat> it's very tight. So potentially, it, you know, it could make an explosive move to the upside. It's been beaten down for quite some time. It's just a matter of time for the shorts to cover. But we need to have it, you know, sustain above these levels of resistance at 421. And right here at uh, 405. So 405 and 421 need to break above. And we need to consolidate above that. For you know people to um, cover their shorts. Otherwise there's no point of covering any shorts. Because look we broke out of a downtrend. Um, you know a few months ago. For what? We, we bounced for two days. We had two green days. Right? But then we just kept on falling afterward and now we're just in a range here so that's not a very good sign it didn't break out of this downtrend in a bullish way um yeah 420 and uh, 405 need to break on sos but overall the macd is very tight um the rsi you know it looks pretty i honestly i just we just need to see it cross above those levels man <laughs> like it's been trading in such a range for such a long time we just need to see it above those levels to give some sort of pressure to shorts to give them an incentive to um cross above okay uh sorry to give them an incentive to cover their shorts so yeah that's that's my analysis on sos so dash 
we're also at this upper level of resistance here that we've created um it basically needs to break tomorrow and that level of resistance that needs to break on dash tomorrow is going to be approximately 159.83 okay if 159.83 breaks that can make a potential squeeze to the upside but you know we're at resistance we're overbought on the macd and the rsi made a very strong move upward obviously because dash also made a strong move upward so we need to see how we respond at 150 what i say 159.83 basically that's about it one other thing to take into consideration is we are trading very close to outside of the b bands so yeah that's that's another thing that we need to take into consideration it could be potentially a bearish sign um because when we do trade outside of the b beds <coughs> sorry excuse me when we trade outside of the b bands mathematically we want the price wants to start trading back inside of it so yeah these are the levels to watch on dash for tomorrow that's the resistance level um, the support level is going to be this level here at approximately 155.50. So 155.50 is the support. 159.83 uh, is the resistance on Dash. Shopify looks ridiculous. <clears throat> so Shopify, obviously, um, the options on Shopify, they're very, very, like, the, the spreads are not very good. But right now, Shopify looks very, very bullish. So basically, we create a bull flag. We can see it here, right? Created this bull flag. We broke out of it. And we broke above this level of resistance at 1300. So now basically, this level is now the support. So 1300 is essentially the support with a upward target of potentially 1432, which is the equivalent of this um, flagpole uh, breaking out. So shop looks very, very bullish. Especially considering the tech sector had a red day. Um, and the fact that Shopify still had a green day is a very, very good sign. So, but we are trading outside of the upper level of the B band. So let's see if we can continue on higher like that. And yeah, looks great on all of the moving averages. Everything looks pretty solid on Shopify. Uh, also, the RSI is getting close to being overbought. But, you know, again, there is history of Shopify trading outside of overbought um, for quite some time. And the MACD, it just crossed above, right? So there is a lot more room to go, potentially. It, you could see the MACD has gone much, much higher in the past. And we haven't even gotten to these past levels on the MACD yet. So, yeah, Shopify can potentially go on much higher. And that's about it. <clears throat> 43 minute video um if you guys enjoyed it go ahead and smash the like button if you waited and watched this entire video you're the best please um you know drop a comment send me a message let me know if there's anything i can do better and i really hope that i helped have an amazing day and thank you so much i'll see you guys tomorrow